Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Scott Wolf. Get ready to play Keeping the Magic Alive. If you love the Disney parks, this game's for you. Ever since I started working for the Disney Studios in 1988, I was fascinated with Disney's great history. In my YouTube series, I try keeping the magic alive by sharing what I've learned over the years. This time, I thought it would be fun to test your Disney theme park knowledge with trivia from those videos. All of the answers can be found in the first 40 episodes of my Keeping the Magic Alive series. Now, if you'd like, this can be an open book quiz or open video, because I'll tell you which episode each answer can be found in. It's up to you if you want to check out the episode or just try answering without it to see what you already know. Keep track of how many questions you get right and let me know in the comments. Are you ready to begin? I'm going to read a multiple choice question and give you a few seconds to choose one before revealing the correct answer. Here we go. The answer for this next question can be found in episode 20, where I talk about Mark Davis and the story that he told me about a particular scene he created in the Jungle Cruise. Here's question one. In an iconic and humorous scene in the Jungle Cruise attraction, what did a rhino chase up a tree? A safari? A boa constrictor? Another rhino? Walt Disney. Do you think you know it? Let's watch a clip with the answer. Mark designed one of the most iconic scenes in the Jungle Cruise, the Trap Safari. And this is the original concept art for that but it wasn't originally designed for that attraction. The next answer is in episode nine, which is about Fulton Burley, who did publicity tours for Disney. He also provided the voice of a bird in Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. This is question two. Which one of the following is a bird character in the Tiki Room? Huey, Louie, Michael, or John? Let's take a look at the answer. For decades, he starred in Disneyland's historic Golden Horseshoe Review in Frontierland. And you can hear him as Michael in the Enchanted Tiki Room attraction. So it is, and what darling people I have sitting under me. The next answer can be found in episode 11, where I share artifacts and photos from the original 1992 Fantasmic World premiere that I attended. Get ready for question three. What 17-foot-tall character glided across the water in the original Disneyland version of Fantasmic? The Cheshire Cat, the Crocodile from Peter Pan, Flounder, Monstro the Whale. Let's take a look at the answer. This is the 17-foot-tall crocodile that followed the pirate ship with Peter Pan. You can find out this next answer in episode 19, which is about a very unique ticket that I have for a special car on the Disneyland Railroad. All right, here we go with question four. What is the name of the unique caboose on the Disneyland Railroad? It's also the name of one of the engines of the Walt Disney World Railroad. Lily Bell, Liberty Bell, Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens. Let's take a look at the answer. Here's some photos of it that I had the opportunity to take. It was decided that the perfect name for this presidential car would be the Lily Bell, a tribute not only to Walt's wife, but a nod to the name of his original train engine as well. Incidentally, it also shares its name with the Lily Bell steam engine at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. You can see this next answer in episode 34, which is about Ricky Lugo, who in the early days of Disneyland was a dancer in a fantastic show. Here's question five. What live stage show could be seen in Disneyland during its first 31 years? The Diamond Horseshoe Review, the Mickey Mouse Review, the Golden Horseshoe Review, the Hoop Dee Doo Review. Here's that clip with the answer. In the middle between the dancers is Betty Taylor, the female singing star of the show who was the longest running cast member of the Golden Horseshoe Review from 1956 until its final performance in 1986. In fact, this trophy was given to Betty for being in the show for 30 years. We're halfway there. Are you guessing correctly? The Sherman Brothers, Walt Disney's legendary songwriting team, wrote such great songs as It's a Small World, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and Winnie the Pooh. 
The answer to this next question is in episode 22, which is about a lesser known song that they wrote. Let's go to question six. What did the Sherman Brothers receive their names on as a special honor? A rooftop in the Epcot London Pavilion, a brick in the Disneyland Esplanade, a window on Main Street in Disneyland, a Walt Disney World ferry boat. Here's a clip with the answer. Now up here is a program from when they received one of Disney's highest honors, having their names on a window along Main Street in Disneyland. You can find the next answer in episode 27, where I talk about the unique Disneyland school field trip that let kids see a live stage show and explore the attractions around the park. Are you ready for the question? This is question seven. What attraction replaced the Carousel of Progress in Disneyland? Rocket Rods, Captain EO, Horizons, America Sings. Do you think you know it? Here's the answer. They would see America Sings, which was one of my favorites. It was in the Carousel Theater that used to house the Carousel of Progress. With the use of audio animatronic characters, many of which were moved to Splash Mountain, America Sings showcased the history of music in America. The answer to this next one can be found in episode 29 about my friend Connie Swanson Lane, who was a part of the New Orleans Square opening day festivities. Here we go with question eight. Which attractions were in New Orleans Square when it opened in Disneyland in 1966? Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, both of the above attractions. There were no attractions yet. Let's look at this clip with the answer. Disneyland's New Orleans Square was a wonderful place to explore, but Pirates of the Caribbean didn't open until the following year, and the Haunted Mansion wouldn't open until 1969. Sadly, Walt never saw those attractions completed. This next answer can be found in episode 26, where Disney legend Harriet Burns tells me some history of Madame Leota, who appears in the Crystal Ball in the Haunted Mansion. Here's question nine. The voice actress of Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion also voiced which of these characters? Maleficent, Lady, the Blue Fairy, Snow White. Let's take a look at the answer. She was telling me about Eleanor Audley, who's the voice you hear of Madame Leota, who appears in the Crystal Ball. It's not Eleanor Audley's face in the attraction, but it's her voice. Harriet told me that she worked with Eleanor a few years earlier when Eleanor did the voice of Maleficent for the classic Disney animated film, Sleeping Beauty. This last answer is found in episode 23 about costume designer Alia Kalinich, who designed many costumes for Disney theme parks around the world. This is the final one. Question 10. Which one of the following was a parade at Disneyland? The Jungle Book Hula Baloo, Alice's Mad Tea Party, the Be Our Guest Bash, the Lion King Celebration. Here's a clip with the answer. When Alia was a full-fledged costume designer, one of her big triumphs and one of her favorite projects was designing all the costumes for Disney's Lion King Celebration Parade in 1994. As with any project, great research went into the design. That's all the questions. How did you do? Leave a comment with how many you got right and maybe which answers were pretty easy or which were challenging for you. It would be fun to see. Now don't worry if you didn't get all the questions right. None of us knows everything about Disney. And besides, now you do know the answers. And the more you know, the more you can be keeping the magic alive. Thanks for playing.